Hey, um, hi, Mrunal. Good evening. We'll wait for a couple of minutes, Mrunal, before we start. You're able to hear me, right? Uh, just raise your hand uh, uh, if it's all clear for you. It's zone one, we'll wait for a couple of minutes and then uh, start. Hey, um, hi, Swati. Hi, Bernard. Uh, just please confirm if I'm clearly audible to you. You can raise your hand or use the chat to confirm on it. Thank you. Okay, it's seven three. Probably we can uh, <clears throat> start uh, with the session, and let's hopefully few members would uh, join in a couple of uh, minutes. But in the meantime, uh, uh, probably we can uh, um, have an intro, like uh, if you can share uh, about you, and if you can just. Uh, Say a couple of things about your expectation about this course and uh, part of uh, you if you can cover about like your prior experience in terms of any programming or database or uh, if you might doing your uh, education that's completely fine if you can cover about like what experience you are uh, uh, having in terms of programming and your expectation in terms of uh, the uh, topics which you are envisioning to cover in this course and probably uh, uh, we can have uh, uh, any questions and clarifications to that and make sure accordingly we'll try to uh, cover those topics and plan those topics and cover them accordingly uh, for it. So I'm just going in the alphabetical order what I see in the attendees list. Uh, not the alphabetical order, the sequence, what I see in that list. Uh, I see Brunal first. Uh, if you want to uh, start with a small intro and if you can share a couple of details about you and your prior experience of coding and your expectation from the course, please. Yeah, hello, uh, Brunal, this side. First of all, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, all in all, I have. Uh, seven years of experience so uh, four years of experience in networking and uh, three years of experience in IAM domain mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just wanted to upskill my uh, 
tech um, upskill in SQL and PL as well. So I've thought of joining team. Got it. Um, Got it. And Got it. So uh, you have I, some programming experience uh, before, right? Uh, yeah. You know, but like, to complete, at least you know the basics of uh, any programming language. Yeah, I know the basics of SQL, but I just wanted to upgrade myself. Nice. Nice. Okay, cool. And any specific topics which you have in mind, part of the course uh, uh, expectation? Oh, uh, I just wanted to uh, more, get more knowledge about the joints part. Mm. Okay, sure. That is a bit complicated for me mm. to do in now and now. Sure, we would cover that. Thank you, Kunal. Yeah, and thank you. next, I see Bernard. Sorry if I pronounce your name uh, wrongly. If you can help me with the right pronunciation, probably I'll use it, correct myself uh, uh, the next time. You want to go ahead uh, next, Bernard? Not sure uh, if you're talking on mute. Probably Swati, uh, you want to go next? You want to uh, share some details about you and your expectation about the course? Okay, Swati is not, not sure if you are having any trouble, Swati. Probably I'll we'll go with next. I see Pranit. Uh, Pranit, uh, if you can just give or take a minute to have uh, a small introduction about you, and uh, if you can share like what experience you have it and your expectation of the course. Prendi, you are able to hear us, right? Okay. Hi. Hey, hi, Pranit. 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 Yes, Pranit. Okay. I just joined now. I just want to... Yeah, we just started with a small intro. And we just want mm -hmm. to understand about uh, uh, each one of uh, you who are attending. And if you can share uh, a couple of uh, details about you, your prior experience in terms of coding any programming language or be it any language or you may not have it, that's completely fine. And your expectation in terms of the course which you wanted to learn or you are very much interested in. Yeah, I am much more interested in to learn this rather than So I am more than Postgres. I just want to know how it's going to work. Okay. I just want to learn. Got it. Uh, is it the first one for you, or you have any prior experience in any other uh, programming language or uh, database? Mm -hmm. Correct. I am a cloud engineer. I'm a cloud. Okay. Got it. Nice. Nice. Okay. Cool. Probably we'll uh, uh, get uh, <clears throat> started. And um, okay. We will uh, uh, cover about like a uh, few details uh, about the course and I'll share some details about uh, myself as well. And then we'll jump on to a basic uh, outline of what we are going to uh, cover in the course and, uh, and what we are going to primarily have uh, 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 the, the overall course content and the schedule uh, for it as well. You're able to see my screen, right? Uh, just confirm uh, or raise your hand or confirm, please. Okay. In case anyone having any trouble uh, during this session, you want you have any questions, clarification, feel free to unmute yourself or you can use the chat window in the bottom of the uh, screen and you can type in your question um, um, as well. Okay. So, uh, 
welcome to the oracle sql and pl sql session this is batch 331 at logic labs uh, technologies and myself venkata i have total of uh, 17 years of experience in it and i've done ex exhaustive work in terms of the backend or the database development and I have experience on the front end uh, uh, and data engineering and a bit on the blockchain and Gen AI as well. So I've been working with uh, many of the Fortune uh, um, uh, top 100, in some of the top 10 companies as well. And my interest or passion towards uh, teaching is what brought me out here and where I'm sharing some of my knowledge or experiences with terms of uh, databases and multiple other tech stacks. And this course, uh, we are going to primarily cover about Oracle SQL and PL SQL. And we would have, the course is designed in such a way that there could be people who are new to Oracle or the the first timers into learning any databases or they they could be some experienced people who are prior experience in databases or the programming so we would cover all the content of both sql and pl sql with starting with a small use case and we would take up a use case of a banking domain how a banking application works and what are the different uh, backend APIs, how you are going to design your data model tables and how you are going to have all the APIs which are defined for it and how you are going to write some queries uh, for those applications. So considering the use case around a banking application, we would go through our uh, uh, learnings like learning how to write a query, how to create the tables and how to make the joins and all and and then eventually into the pl sql conference as well okay so that's the overall a very high level of the content for oracle uh, pl sql and on this uh, course and this course starts today which is 9th of uh, july and the course timing is 7 to 8 pm and in case you do not have the details of the course fee and you can go through these details and you can reach out or to the support team or you can go through the website for logiclabstech.com and you can get the details of all the ongoing courses or the future upcoming courses as well and um, this the first three sessions whatever we are going to have it are the demo sessions and um, uh, you are free to attend the session and free to get in some insights about what we are going to discuss. But this will predominantly be introduction sessions of what we are going to cover and uh, how we will learn about uh, the databases, we'll learn about uh, database management systems, and we will learn about the uh, uh, basics of SQLs, the history of the databases and all. We would cover about in this uh, 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 initial sessions and then um, uh, the paid sessions the people who have registered we would start with uh, all the access to the instance and uh, the getting in details about the use case what we are going to develop and what is the intention of the use case and all we would cover about the complete content or the course details from there on um, for the paid um, or registered um, members and there's no bad shifting or uh, the refund uh, process for it in case you have any questions clarifications or any doubts regarding the uh, process or registration or any content you want to have it feel free to reach out to the support team they will be happy to help you out and make sure your queries whatsoever are addressed and we have the WhatsApp uh, uh, community, the link which is already uh, mentioned over the uh, chat uh, window for you. You can um, um, uh, 
join to the community through WhatsApp and you can get the latest updates about the course details and any other future courses as well through this WhatsApp uh, community link. Okay. And we can, uh, um, in, I'll just walk you through to the uh, website, the logic labs uh, tech.com and the place where you can see through all the details. And when you open the logic labs uh, tech.com, you can um, go through the upcoming uh, batches where you can see all the courses which are happening out with the start details, the schedule and everything. The same WhatsApp link which I was shared with you, you can uh, have the link over this uh, upcoming courses page as well. And the Zoom link which you got it, you can uh, register for the demo and join the Zoom. And in case anyone else in your uh, uh, network uh, are interested to join the course and learn about uh, 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 the Oracle, feel free to share it uh, with them as well. And you can see the course content, what we are going to uh, cover, and you can get the payment. Once you feel comfortable to register for the session, you can register and uh, make the payment and you would receive the uh, Zoom link and other uh, communication details of how to join the session and everything once you registered uh, on it. And on the course content, if you see for Oracle SQL and PL SQL, uh, it's a 30 day course. It, we would cover some theoretical concepts. We would cover about the architecture concepts and we would cover about the hands-on uh, both SQL and PL SQL and in case you have any questions based on your experience we are completely uh, free to discuss and clarify uh, them eventually intention is others who are in the session as well it's going to help them as well right so be it any doubts keep it open and keep it feel free to chat raise the question ask doubts more and more you ask that more and more you uh, explore and more and more you try maybe you might get some errors that's completely fine you need to try explore how it works out different ways of working it out and this oracle sql and pl sql is the easiest subject and this is one of the basic subject which is required onto any uh, text stack. So SQL, whether you do the full stack development, whether you do the cloud, whether you do uh, Gen AI, whether you any sort of uh, uh, thing, right? The whole one of the primary way of interacting with your uh, backend is a SQL based uh, interaction, a query based interaction. And keeping from the database engineering perspective, we would go into more details about uh, the PL SQL components as well, part of it. And we will learn in details about some of the basic data types, advanced data types, and how to how to do the uh, uh, bulk uh, uh, processing and all those details. So at a high level, this is the course content, what we are going to cover it, uh, introduction sessions. And then uh, I will start with the SQL database objects. We'll cover with some of the uh, built-in functions and grouping and how to have these linkages or integrity constraints uh, between tables to maintain the data consistency and the data integrity in your data model and the data as well. And how you can have references uh, in your uh, data model. And then we go on to the other uh, concepts of different commands, joins with different tables, how to create these views, and how to convert this view into materialized views as well. We would cover about the partitions, parallel processing, and we'd cover about all the uh, concepts of stored procedures and everything. And at the end, the last few sessions, we would cover about uh, uh, the architecture to understand whatever we learned, how the database is actually working it out, how it is processing the data, and how it is able to handle such amount of load. 
so we would cover about those concepts as well and some of the advanced features which are coming up in the uh, new uh, latest uh, releases from Oracle <laughs> side. We would cover some of those things as well. And yeah, that's on the course content, uh, what we uh, are going to have it. And any questions, as I said, feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself you have complete option given to you to unmute and place any questions any doubts any clarifications during the session okay and before we uh, start with some of the basic introduction to sql and real sequels we would learn about the databases first right to understand what is database and then we can jump on to the in detail like we'll go baby steps like we'll start with basics that let's understand the ground and then we'll jump on to each and every sub section of this ground whatever we are going to cover okay and before we uh, do you have any questions or clarifications anyone want to share anything uh, uh, or any doubts feel free to raise it or feel free to use a chat we will pause here for a minute I see a few more people join. Hi, Karthik. Hi, Dayan, Venkat, and uh, Chiranjeevi. And there is a question on chat. Will the recording be available to the students? Yes. For the demo sessions, whatever you have it, it's the introduction sessions. This would be available for anyone over the YouTube link as well. Once the session is done, you would be able to access it and you would get the communication over the WhatsApp community link as well. Similarly, once you complete the daily sessions, whatever notes we are using, whatever uh, use case data model we are creating, you would get all the details over to you and you would have access to the LMS system where you can get all the details for daily notes and the recordings as well for the paid uh, members for the actual content whatever we are going to cover and similarly you would have access to the uh, instance i will show you getting access to the on-premise instance and getting access to the cloud instance as well so that you can access it anytime anywhere you where you want to practice we would show all those things once we start with the actual course as well okay. and all the content we are going to cover part of this course is completely a use case driven okay. it's not that we're going to cover only specific to the use case no i'm going to teach you the concept of what we are going to learn in that day and i'll give a use case Okay, now this is a use case. How would I convert or write a query from the technical terms to the functional terms of it? So that you will come get a gist of when someone gives you a requirement, how to understand the requirement, how to convert from technical to the functional, which gives the, the actual business value to the project or your deliverable. And similarly, Every week, this is a Monday to Friday session. Monday to Friday, 7 p.m. to 8, 8 p.m. And every week on Friday, we will give you the assignments where you can utilize your time, the break time of Saturday and Sunday to practice. Do the self-practice. Try it. Try it in different ways. Be nasty. No problem. But try it, make sure, wait to how to do it, how not to do it. We should, we should need to know both the sides. And similarly, once you come back on the next week, on the Monday session, we would discuss about the assignments, how each member understood the question, how they have uh, converted it. And accordingly, I'll help you out to correct 
your understanding or correct your queries part of the session so that's what we are going to do part of the daily uh, uh, session cover the topics convert into the functional aspects of it and then have an assignment every week based on the topics whatever we are going to cover in that week and practice those assignments come back with any questions so it's not that you're going to do only on saturday and sunday you need to do it on every day whatever topics you're going to cover but an additional effort because it's a weekend okay any other questions clarifications bernard i believe that answered your question Anyone else? Probably you might have joined late. I, Karthik, Dayan, Venkat, or Chiranjeevi. Uh, I hope you were present when I am covering the course content. Right? You have any questions? What we are going to uh, discuss in this course for the thirty days? And uh, uh, feel free to utilize this time to raise any questions, any queries. Feel free for that. Okay, I don't see any the question or uh, right. Okay, I'll jump on to the next one. Okay, let me go into the presentation mode. You're able to see my screen. Why I see a blank screen. Okay, sorry. Okay, I see a blank screen on my uh, desktop. Not sure why. Probably I'll stick on to the normal mode. Okay, so we are going to discuss about the Oracle SQL and uh, PL SQL, right? So before we even start with the Oracle topic, let's yeah, and let's step back uh, a minute, right? And we need to understand about like what is database all about, and what are different types of databases. Why we need a database firstly, and we are saying like, oh, we are going to learn a lot of things about SQL joins, PL SQLs, API backend APIs, and all, right? And Before even get into the database, right? We need to understand what exactly is database, why a database management system is required, and then we can get into the next concepts of how these systems have been evolving and getting to know more details about it, right? And okay, so anyone want to uh, take a lead and share some insights? What, according to you, is a database? Anyone want to share a thought? What, according to you, is a database? Do I need to really mention about enterprise applications when I say database? What would be database? Okay. And in simple terms, data is nothing but information. And database is a place where you are storing the information. Now, it can be a piece of paper, it can be a book, it can be a file, it can be anything where I am storing some information. Might say like we have written some carvings or maybe some literature or some data what our ancestors want to share over the stones as well. It's also a database. Nothing wrong in it. It's a way of persisting the data and sharing the data with others, where you can have that information readable, writable, and 
changeable as well or updatable. And each of these generations, how we have returned the data, how we have managed the data, and how we have evolved as the way we write it, the way we uh, our lives have changed. Each of these applications or systems have evolved in a similar fashion. Like it's almost in sync with our real life, right? Now you store large amount of data, be it in a paper, might be a small 10 to line, 10 to 15 lines of uh, 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 paragraph or some content you're going to write in an A4 sheet, for example. Or maybe a book, you might have 100 or 200 pages of content you want to write it. And be it a digital format, it might be in KBs, it can be in uh, MBs, it might go into terabytes, TBs as well. It's all data, be it small, be it large. And the intention of the database is to make sure it is accessible for everyone where we want to, whenever we want to access. And if we want to modify it, it should be able to modify. I should be able to modify it and I should be able to persist that information and if I want to organize it properly, because obviously having a throw of, throwback of papers in my room, does it does not look good. But having it in a proper categorized way, like category one papers, maybe a category two, the topics related to it, or category three, topic related to it, I want to segregate my papers accordingly and order it very neatly so that information is understandable. Like anyone who wants to read the book or a bunch of papers, when I take off the papers, when I go through paper one, paper two, paper three, whatever the sequence I provide, he should be able to understand it neatly, right? So the intention here is not just about having the information, it's about making the information usable, not just useful. When I say useful, anyone will feel the information as useful information. But when I'm going to apply that useful information in some of the other activity or task which I perform, and it is adding a value to me in performing the task, then that is a usable data. So having a terabytes of useful information, it is not valuable, but making use of it, making use of the data to drive your day-to-day -day activities or, or task, be it any activities, task or your work whatsoever, it should be usable as well. So database is nothing but the collection of this data where you can handle all such operations for you. And these operations, whatever we do it, the importance of this eventually is usability. Right? It should drive a purpose. I it, having a terabyte of information, it's of no use without any purpose. It should have a purpose and it should be usable for me to improve my business in one or the other way. Whoever are the users or the end users, stakeholders, customers, whatever be the nomenclature or the name of this uh, segment. I need to take, keep a track of these stakeholders, how they are going to access, what they are going to access, why they are going to access. I need to keep a track of all these details and how making this data accessibility and usability can be improved. So I need to keep a tab on 
all of this eventually drawing some analysis out of this data and make or improve my business out of it and whatever information we have it this information because when i say data i might have a book where i have written some passwords or my bank accounts whatsoever right it's a data now you don't keep this book publicly publicly outside anywhere right it's your personal information it's a confidential information for you it's not just a private it's confidential for you you need to understand the level of access and level of knowing the information as well so based on that you need to secure your data be it public be it private be it confidential accordingly need to handle that and this database whatever we are going to provide it should be in a position to store the personal information having the layer of trust so i'm having a layer of trust which enables me to store the personal information let's say if you have amazon for example or maybe any e-commerce application you register on the website you provide your email id you provide your mobile or a phone number and you provide your address information be it billing address be it shipping address or be it any other communication address based on how the system is designed right you provide your personal physical location details where you are actually staying or where you actually work and you provide your bank account details credit cards or upis whatsoever to make the payments this is all your personal information your public information is just your name unless you want to share the, your email id and date of birth which is a private information which is specifically need to be known to certain people you can share it only with the known people same thing with the account details address details these are confidential information so you want to share only with the person who needs to know not with everyone so these applications have built that layer of trust for you and what happens if there is a hack and someone steals the data from your database be it in any format be it getting the hard disk getting it the access to some of the apis whatsoever right so you should have the secured layer so that database whatever we are going to uh, deal with it should have all these criteria in order to make my business successful so that's the end goal for us and as we are talking about these databases right we are talking about the intention of database what it consists what should be the primary factor uh, 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 factories of this database and all eventually as we discuss it's evolved we used to have it in a single file once we the physical files we convert into the digital files right be it a text file be it an excel file or be it a csv file whatsoever we converted the digital into the we converted the physical files into the digital files and eventually as the applications keep on growing multiple users want to access at the same time we felt it is difficult to continue with file based systems and then we went started with a databases like relation database where you can maintain the information in some sort of table structure or some sort of uh, 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 data model where you can maintain the relation between these different tables or data models let's say like parent child relationship right i might um, i work in an employee i am an employee in an organization 
and similarly they can be multiple uh, employees in the organization and with together i can form a team and each and everything are some of the other entities which works itself and independent entities right and there's a relation between those things that's where we come across the relational databases for it and we cover about no sequels initially we started with the sequel based database everything needs to uh, be a relational database and we need to have a sequel or query based systems and all eventually we come up with a no sequel based a document based uh, uh, databases as well a file based databases or maybe anything other than the table structure based like json object based or image based or a video based right all these are no sequel database so you, these are not actual um, data which is streamlined for you right this is unstructured data on the no sequel side and the object oriented where the data you can access or data you can um, um, manage is predominantly working in the same principles of the object oriented program where you can uh, load the data onto an object base which is required typically for an applications uh, uh, systems you can have the object based database as well and you have the cloud based databases you have distributed databases and we have the hierarchical databases all these different types of databases okay these did not evolve just like that it evolved based on how our real life is being managed and how our day-to-day uh, -day activities are being performed we are trying to create a technology or create a system which predominantly matches our day-to-day -day life and how we work it how we manage those things and how we put an interlink between those the way we work it the way we see that information the way we envision the information or use the information based on that these systems have evolved step by step and eventually most of these systems at the moment are the distributed systems at multiple uh, geographical locations and there are some of these applications which are cloud native or databases or a non cloud native databases as well and we would come across all these different types of databases as we go through but we would be specific to the relational database uh, of what we are going to um, be precise with the oracle uh, standpoint and before i jump on to the next topics so we covered about uh, the database we covered about the essence the purpose of a database and we covered about types of databases right and i'll take a uh, couple of seconds pause here and any questions any clarifications any doubts feel free any to di difference between object oriented DB and the cloud DB and the distributed DB in a single. Yeah. Not a problem. Let you if you see an object oriented DB, right? So object oriented uh, DB. Let's say you have a class object. Let's say for example, like uh, a vehicle, car, whatsoever. Okay, this is defined for a particular structure or data model, where the relation between these data. how you store it you are going to store it in an object sense not as a uh, pure raw data sets so in this type of scenarios where it would be easy for you to load your data from your tables dump it into the uh, objects directly right like the uh, the logical objects on your uh, maybe java programming or dot net programming whatsoever instead of querying it loading the data into an uh, uh, array list or converting into a class and all you can easily do that with an object oriented databases
And when I say cloud databases, I'm predominantly talking about the native cloud databases, where by design, your systems are designed where you can spun up any instance or maintain the instance on cloud. This is completely on the virtual machines, how you are going to manage, how you are going to have it, and how you are going to share it, be it distributed, be it, um, uh, sorry, the shared uh, database, be it uh, a, uh, an individual database or dedicated uh, systems whatsoever. Those are completely on cloud. So you can say like, so what would be the difference, let's say if I have Oracle, whether it, whether it should be considered as an on-premise database or a cloud database. So database which is completely managed on the cloud systems for you. It is on a server, but that is not on-premise, right? It is completely managed on the server. Let's say, for example, be it an Amazon S3 for you. This is a file-based system or a bucket-based system predominantly to store your files, folders, whatsoever. This is purely designed as a cloud native application. Similarly with Oracle as well. Oracle has both on-premise as well as the cloud database where you can manage predominantly in your network or the cloud network. But even though it's the same database, works on the same principles, but the way this develop is happened, the way it works out on the resources is completely different. So there's a very thin line when I say the on-premise databases with all these versions, MySQL, Oracle, and the cloud native databases. Okay, Let's say uh, cloud native with something like a big data or Hive or Presto. These are completely different for you. It works on the same principles, just that these are by native. By the way it is developed, it is developed for the cloud side. And for the distributed databases, right? And the, on the distributed database, your data is not present in one single geolocation for you. There are different principles of having multiple network uh, nodes and multiple areas where you can store it. But the basic fundamental principle behind it is you're not going to maintain a single copy of your data at any time. You're going to have multiple copies and multiple different locations so that even when one of the node in your DB network or cluster goes down, you would have a backup in the other places which would be having as backup systems for you. It can happen in different ways. It's not going to be the same way like I should be having a backup in multiple places, no. It, it can be the place where the whole system works on a console of databases across different regions. And you can have the data specific to that region, but you can have a data warehouse which would be a cluster of all these databases together as well. Where the way you're going to design your system is handling these uh, multiple uh, uh, databases together. Did it answer your uh, uh, question? Any queries? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And like something like you have Cassandra or MongoDB and all, we would uh, come into those uh, NoSQL uh, databases. And these distributed SQLs, Again, like those are, these eventually have started like different concepts, but in the current uh, tradition of these systems which are available, right, you would predominantly have these as cloud and distributed SQL databases. But way back, maybe 10 years back, it used to be like two completely different uh, uh, things like completely one system for open oriented and one uh, system for like uh, distributed uh, databases. It used to be like completely on-premise and used to have all these concepts back then. Now, once the cloud has kind of emerged and 
pretty much all databases like be it oracle oracle handles the file based uh, uh, systems it handles the nosql based system okay and it it has the object oriented uh, uh, capabilities as well and it it is obviously a distributed system like from back from um, uh, 9i onwards instead of having multiple uh, schemas you can have it across different uh, 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 regions as well so eventually like now it has become like instead of having like one database only with one sort of uh, uh, features sort of thing now as the way we evolved the way our life evolved this also comes up with multiple combinations of it based on how these um, uh, systems work uh, and all it kind of like evolved in multiple different uh, uh, combinations of it but essentially the principles behind it are the same with the acid uh, principles and the atomicity principles just that different way of handling it out to handle the workloads of these uh, systems okay uh, any other uh, questions or clarifications here okay i'll Good jump on to the <clears throat> okay thank you I'll jump on the next one. Okay, we are talking about a lot of these things, right? So multiple systems are present, different places, different concepts all throughout, and you need to have all these properties of uh, uh, trust layer, access. You need to have uh, security in your data and everything. Right? Obviously, it's not going to be one one man job, right? It's a you are running a a, a small uh, business. you have like tens and hundreds of activities you need to uh, do obviously you're going to divide those activities right so you need to have a logical division of activities and accordingly you might have like three to four members working along with you to manage everything in sync right similarly what happens with the database management system also okay. in order to have the a stable database a robust database for you where you can have the scalability to be taken care you need to have um, uh, 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 any security uh, uh, threats you need to have a watch on it you need to have a watch on the access you need to have a watch on the policies there are multiple things which happens right now database management system is simple is a consolidated version or a consolidated system with all these handlers or agents or you can say jobs which does this activity behind the screen for you maybe let's say this file space is completed you want to increase the file space so you have a job which takes care of it you want to make sure the policies are running correctly when someone is accessing there is a separate job which takes care of it an agent which takes care of it okay now you want to have an audit log whatsoever right whatever happens in your system you need to keep a track of all this so all these are a different requirements in maintaining a database like if you want to have a healthy organization right you need to have everything you need to have the guards you need to have your let's say for example kind of uh, listeners or reception for you. you need to have different agents who do this uh, what do you call uh, this bookkeeping activity or the operations activity okay and you would be having some of those uh, agents who would take care of uh, uh, space um, management who would have uh, would have agents who takes care of the memory management you would have agents who takes care of the uh, data consistency aspect of it right all these things right that's when you would have a solid database working out for you which would thrive and meet the enterprise requirements the way the businesses are growing every day okay you need to have these databases in par to that speed and you need to handle a huge amount of data as well 
so all this how it is working out what are different jobs and all is completely taken care by the database management it's complete console or consolidated of all these small small pieces together to work effectively in sync as one system for you we call it as in simple say database management system it can be if it's a relational data we call this rdbms if it's a simple database we can call it as database management systems at a high level this is what we call a dbms or a database management system and we can do like we are good we talk about good of uh, database we talked about database management system at high level but what exactly will a database management system consist right in simple terms right database i need some space where i store the information the uh, what you call the hardware where i need to store the information i need this application the software which runs all these things performs those activities and all these two together cannot work independent right there's no value to it the crunch of whole thing is obviously the data which i'm going to store in my uh, hardware and the software is what going to take care of writing or reading whatsoever which is required and the data access language whatever the first three we discussing is completely internal to the system for the end user if i have like terabytes of data there can be like hundred thousands of files lying out in my database right just imagine as a library okay now you go to your library now you want to search for a book all right you are going to literally like if assuming there is no uh, uh, system or reception for you for example who can help you out you are going to literally go to each and every section of the uh, library and see whether the book or the material what you are searching is available right you to have a way of communicating to the system this way of communicating to the system which helps you to search for something get something or do something is the data access language and this language varies from system to system but typically as we are talking about from the oracle perspective one of the basic or the early earlier language what we started with is the sql and that's a query query based language or structured query language what we call it and obviously you have all this you have language to talk through you have data you have space you have software to do all those things there should be set of guidelines for you right it's not that i'm going to just go there update whatsoever required do whatsoever required delete whatsoever required there are set of guidelines and principles how you are going to define your organization right so let's say you have your own business you are going to just do whatever you want everyone in your company organization does not do whatever they want there should be certain principles certain guidelines and certain workflows how each and every task to be done and all those activities so that's what we call it as procedures or the workflows in a uh, database how it works out and how to uh, make sure it's working in the right way and everything so that are the basic components of the uh, database and this together captures you the the database management system so we covered about databases and we covered about database management systems and now the next topic we'll get into the oracle databases right oracle database is one of the earlier uh, uh, system which is actually developed or maybe you can say at an enterprise level or a commercial level one of the success earlier successful uh, application which was developed and used across okay and 
started back in 1978 and 79 78th initial version which was released and then 79 um, uh, when the actual uh, the version got released which we call it as v2 from there on there are multiple versions each enhancement maybe be it smaller enhancement be it bigger enhancements based on the feedback from multiple enterprises the way information is stored accessed terabytes of data like billions of billions of data which is stored accessed anywhere right based on all these things based on each and every improvement areas which are identified latest version which you get is the oracle 23 ai with some of those autonomous uh, features which takes care of some of this bookkeeping and operation activities and all so it's kind of trying to automate and do a self-sustainable system by itself okay. it comes up in two different uh, layers one is a transactional processing system or a data warehouse and some of these uh, systems there are a mix of these systems as well where we use as both transactional system as well as the data warehouse system and but typically at a bigger organization we typically kind of keep it separate transaction database as a separate and data warehouse as separate so that in terms of resource consumption or in terms of processing whatsoever there won't be any clash between these two activities anytime okay so but that's not a thumb rule so if it's a small scale business you will be able to manage both together you can have that mix and match as well that's on the oracle database uh, side and the relational database just to give a hint of what we are going to uh, discuss tomorrow we'll get into the topic of relational database and um, how we are going to discuss how relational database is created how data is stored and what are the format of uh, these information and how the relationships are created and everything we would cover in detail about or the introduction of the relational databases in tomorrow's session so today we covered the basics of the database and then we jumped on to database management systems and then we jump on to the <clears throat> components of uh, uh, database at a high level and um, we covered about uh, a slight introduction or the history of the oracle database and then to relational database which is our next topic and for relational database we would cover about how the data is stored what are its principles what are the value adds of having a relational database how what is the importance of each and every uh, uh, feature of relational database we would cover in detail about those things and then we jump on to the actual um, uh, creation of tables uh, queries and everything that would be the next topic from there on so yeah that's the session for today before we close out this session any questions any clarifications feel free to um, uh, unmute and uh, speak out or use the chat window as well okay berat uh, i see your question for uh, the uh, batches and the payment link i'm giving you this upcoming courses link benard you can go through this link and from here you can go to the course for batch number 331 for oracle sql and pl sql and do join the whatsapp community so you get the daily updates and the payment link which is present um, on it and others in case of any questions any clarifications regarding the content one second feel free to go through the content which will give you the complete overview and it's not going to be just this content based on how we are able to uh, cover it and how fast we have covered it we will be able to cover more topics um, uh, uh, in our and any other questions how any other based on your experience we would cover those things as well 
so our intention by end of this course is to make make sure to keep you in a self paced position with giving you a confident by building your confidence and giving you the complete understanding of starting and till the end how the complete oracle works it out and obviously it's not going to be like complete topic because it's the systems has, has been there almost like 50 years so we are going to cover each and every topic whatever what developed in 50 years right but we would cover all the important topics the concepts how to use them why to use them way to use them along with a small use case for it yeah any questions any clarifications anyone okay if no other questions probably we'll wind up the session for today here and we will connect tomorrow same time 7 pm ist and feel free to explore it yourself and come up with any questions doubts we're happy to clarify it and then continue on the next session Thanks a lot, guys. Have a nice day. Good evening. Good morning. Bye.